Hello everyone, Brian here, continuing the work on the Aedes R San Pedro de la Nave um, model. And I've made a lot of progress since the last video and thought I'd share a little bit about what I'd learned. So the last time that we did a video, I was talking about the need to, you know, I was talking about the fact that I had done this section here and I had only built up to about this point on this side, and I wanted to make sure that what I did here lined up properly. And so it's important to work around the model layer by layer, to not build up this section before you've built up this section, to keep everything going up in a uniform fashion. So I did that. And I noted last time that I was concerned that we wouldn't line up here nicely. Uh, but in fact, with a little sanding and a little bit of, of um, uh, kind of aligning things properly, everything worked out okay. And so now I'm all the way around the model um, with everything to a certain level. And I'm coming up to my final level here. You see, I'm I'm two down over here, and I'm beginning to work around at this level and going along and just raising it up section by section by section. Um, when I had done originally these boards here, I put them in before I had done this brickwork over here, and I've concluded that that was probably a mistake. Um, that made it more important to make sure that before I put these bricks in over here, they were sanded to the right angle to be able to meet against the wood there. And now the only thing I can do to uh, fill in the little holes I have here and over on this side as well, you see I, I worked very hard on the sanding to get that very even. Um, but the only thing I've got to hide those holes is the tile. So I've only got one level here to be able to hide imperfections over here. On the back side, I did it differently. On this side, I built up all the brickwork first, and then I put in the wood slats after. So I actually had a number of gaps in here that were hidden by the wood, and now the only gap I've got left is this little one right here, and the tile will easily cover all of those things. So if you look over on this side, you see some of the wider gaps I have here. When I put in the wood slatting there, it'll cover these pretty much entirely, and then the tile work um, on the roofs will cover up anything else there. So I would recommend to anybody building these models, don't put in the, the wood roofing until you're done with all of the brickwork. It gives you more opportunity um, there to, um, to hide any imperfections you might have. Um, the other thing I'm going to note here is that the you see here, um, it would only be about half a tile that would bring me up to the top here, but because of the wood slats um, angle down, you're going to have a hard time seeing anything in there. And that's what I did over here. You can just barely see, if you really tilt this up, you can see that, that, you can, you can, that the wood slats don't quite meet the brickwork, um, but nobody's ever going to view it from this angle, and so you're never going to know. And so I don't think it's worth putting an extra layer of bricks here and sanding them down. I think probably what I'll do instead is I'll take a Sharpie and I'll go over all of this in black. So even if you are at that angle, you'll never actually see that. Same thing that I talked about last time going around the windows in black Sharpie so that if you don't uh, meet the edges perfectly, you're never actually going to see it when you look in. And in fact, this window and this window, all that is is black Sharpie on white cardboard as opposed to this window, which actually goes all the way through the structure. So I do all the brickwork all the way around, um, and then I come in with sanding sticks and sand those items down so that the slope on the bricks matches the roof and we're ready to put the um, uh, the wood slats down on there. You know, I sand all of this to make sure all of this is even and ready to receive the wood slats over in this direction. 
And so the one I'm ready to do next is this one over here. Everything has been angled nicely to receive those. Um, the other thing that's worth noting is, is when you are working on a section like, say, this, you've got connections here you're making at the corners, and sometimes you're going to want the pieces to go all the way through. Uh, I've got a piece here that connects all the way to the end here, and I've got another piece here that only goes to the edge, and the piece on this side goes all the way in. So when you're working into inside corners like this, you actually want to start laying the bricks. If, if you've got a piece that starts over, well, like this one, this one goes from the very edge here and comes out. You want to start laying from that piece that hits this side and work outward from there. Don't work from this side into that way. Because when, when you hit situations like this, where this piece pops out a little bit from there, it's much easier to sand this down to the right level when you're done just to come in here and sand that down until it's flush than it is to be working right from a flush area here and coming down to here and now finding, you know, you've got a, you've got a sand to meet the edge. You've got a sand to meet the window. It's more complicated to work from this way in than it is just to come out here, let things pop out as much as they need to and do whatever sanding you need to do there. Um, so I find I'm alternating these things. On this one, I started here and I worked out. Then I took this one and went that way. Um, right now, I've got a piece here that connects all the way in. Um, that's gonna, I'm gonna work out from there. Here, this piece here went all the way in and I worked out this way before I put this piece in. And now we'll see how far I go out here. I'll probably overhang here and I'll do some sanding. So you're always on the outside corners. That's where you can do your sanding easily to make things all line up. And again, I use, I keep a vacuum next to me and I just do all the sanding I need to and stuff falls all over the place and then I vacuum it up and it's all nice and clean to move on to the next thing. Um, I also do sanding straight across these surfaces you see here um, some of these uh, trapezoid pieces, some of these angled pieces. You can see the shadow right here. They were um, thinner than the rest of the bricks were. And so I've still got some sanding to do here to, to bring this stuff back so that it is level with the trapezoid pieces because it looks odd for these to be indented from this. Um, in fact, this one right here, I found that this piece was so narrow when I was done that I had to take, um, in the bag, I had a very narrow sliver. And I sanded that piece down and glued it on top of the original one to kind of bring that out a little more so that I could sand it back and make it more flush. So you got to watch some of these specially shaped pieces because they're not necessarily the same width of, as the standard pieces you get. And you don't want to have these effects where this stuff is indented. Um, you can see on this side... I've got a similar shadowing problem here, and it's also um, difficult. One of the one of the most difficult things I faced here is trying to sand the square pleat pieces so that they land nicely in the arch. And you see, I've got I I didn't quite get it here, um, and I've got this deep shadow that I don't like, and I'm still trying to figure out how am I going to fill that in. I may end up putting white glue in there and then covering it with sanding dust to try and uh, try and line that all up. I don't like the fact that this isn't all uniform. Um, some areas, like down here, you end up actually not seeing the line of the brickwork. That's because of sanding I did. And if I just scrape out some of the dust here a little bit, you can begin to see a line there of... Um, of the division between the bricks. Um, after I get done sanding this all, I'll end up coming in here tightly with the vacuum, pull all that dust out, 
And then in the end, when I go over all this with a sponge, all of the, the distinct brick seams should be, uh, we should be able to see them here and it should be fine. Another thing you'll note, you'll have to do a lot. Uh, I'm looking for one here. So we've got a little piece here where um, things didn't quite line up right. So I, I in, in trying to put a, a brick here to line up with what I had here, this was a little too short. Um, and I couldn't find a brick that was long enough to overhang that I could sand back. And so what I ended up having to do is find a very thin sliver in the bag or create one myself um, to build out slightly. And you will have situations like that where you've got to get little slivers um, to build things out properly so that you don't have any indentations here on the end where it's difficult to sand them off. Uh, we've got another one right here where you don't want the seams to line up. And so sometimes when you're, when you're putting the bricks in place, uh, you find that things just don't line up right, like this one and this one and this one and this one. And you have to kind of plug in little pieces there to make it work. So that is some of the tips and tricks so far. Um, one of the other things I'm realizing as I'm getting up to the height, you'll see that these roofs are flush here and the wood slats you have overhang them. Um, and that's not, you know, I, I noted in an earlier video, I probably wouldn't put the roofs on so that I have the flexibility to reach in. When the cat jumped on this section, it would have been nice not to have the roof in place. First of all, the, the thing would have crushed in the first place. But secondly, I could have reached in and I could have pushed out the edges more and maybe glued it up to the bricks so that I wouldn't have had so much, uh, you know, reaching in here and, and having to flex it in place while I put the bricks in. If the roof hadn't been here, that would have been easier to deal with. And then when you look at the roof on the very top of the crossing here, it overhangs. And as I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, well, it's going to be very difficult now. If I hadn't put this roof on, I could have built the bricks up to the top. Like these, I could have sanded it down at an angle and then put the roof on nice and tight. Now I'm essentially going to have to sand the bricks to an angle to to shove them up in there. Um, and that's work I wouldn't have to do had I not put this roof on in the first place. So again, I recommend building up the sides and not putting the roof pieces on until you've got the brickwork really up to, you know, close to the edge um, or maybe right up to the edge. And then you can glue the roofs on and it's going to be better for you. Um, so a couple of tricks and trips here as I've gone along. Um, you see here, as I'm working across these windows, the windows are very tight. I'm having to uh, sand some of the intermediary bricks to length here properly for the windows. Um, I had to do the same thing around these windows. You always have situations where you're just not going to find a brick of the right length and you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to play with the brick with the sanding stick and get it to the right length and, and make sure it works properly. As I'm looking at this now, I don't know if it shows up in the video, but I'm seeing a shadow line right across here as well. Again, this arch is one of those special brick parts. It is not as wide as the rest of the bricks here, and so I'm going to have to do sanding here to bring those things level. One last thing, and I've noted this before, is after you lay a level, if you're going for, um, unless you're going for a really, really rustic look, um, once I put a layer in here, I'm actually sanding across the top of that to make sure that the whole layer is the same height so that the next line that goes in is very level, that I'm not getting a lot of undulations amongst these bricks, um, which gives for an overly rustic work. I mean, when you look at San Pedro de la Nave in the, video, in the um, pictures on the web now, you'll see that these bricks are really um, very much oversized for what the real building is constructed of. So when you're putting together one of these models, you're getting a very nice 
uh, very rustic, very realistic effect. Um, but it's it's a uh, it's an impression is all it is. It's not like the real building. The real building, uh, these bricks are smaller. The seams are much tighter. And if if you were standing far enough away for the building to look this small, you would not see the seams at all here. Um, so it's very much an impressionistic model. But my feeling is anything you do to make the the uh, seams very right angle and smooth and level um, really makes the overall model look better vis-a-vis -vis the real thing. The other thing I've noted that I've been very happy with is the decision to create uh, the windows here that do not exist in the model as delivered. Um, it makes it look much truer to the real building, and I think it adds visual interest vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the delivered model, the pictures you have on the box. Um, it looks much more like a model, um, given that it doesn't have these details here. So I think the extra effort of figuring out where you need to add detail in is, is well spent. So anyway, that's... Um, that's some of the, the current work that's being done here. I have actually cut out um, the wood pieces that will go here, and I will be gluing those in soon. Uh, but here you get an impression of how they're going to look on there. They'll just glue up, and then you see you've got almost, almost no gaps here left in the brickwork, and those will be easily hidden by the tile, and it will not be a problem. Um, I cut all of these items, and then what I'll do is end up adjusting them in and out slightly so that they all line up on this edge, even if they don't quite line up on this edge, because on this edge I can hide any gaps with the tile work and we'll be in good shape. So that's all for now. Um, I will probably have one or two more videos in this series. I'll certainly want to show you what it looks like to put the tiling in on the top. And I had a commenter recently note that they're as excited with these models about the opportunity to do um, the diorama work, the grass and the sand and the bushes and what have you as anything else. And I have to admit, I'm intimidated by that. I've built models all my life. I have never once done a diorama. Um, so even adding grass to this model is something that's brand new to me, and I have to admit I'm a little afraid of doing a really nice job on the model and then really screwing it up um, with, the, with the natural diorama work around it. Um, so I'm looking at opportunities to practice that now. Maybe I'll make a video or two around that, and um, we'll wade into those waters together. That's new ground for me. Um, so anyway, thank you for joining me. That's all for now. Um, please like, please comment. I'd be happy to uh, hear what people have to say and respond to it. And thank you for watching the video. Take care.